valves, valve springs, and valve guides. There could be a few questions about these on the A1 test. ASC doesn't expect you to work at a machine shop and know how to recondition these components. ASC at least expects you to know how to measure these components. That way, you know what needs to be sent out to a machine shop for repair. Here, we're using a valve spring compressor to compress the valve spring and remove the keepers. Then the spring, retainer, and finally the valve. This is an overhead camshaft engine. A cam in the block engine has the spring a bit more exposed, so you can use a tool like this. In this scenario, the technician is using a specialty tool to compress the valve spring and remove the keepers. The cylinder has been filled with pressurized air in order to hold the valve. With this method, you can replace the valve spring and seal without removing the cylinder head. Moving on to the valve spring measurements. First one is the free height measurement. Free height measurement. Measure the valve spring with a caliper 1.844. This particular engine does not have a specification for spring free height. So in that case, you would look for an obvious spring that is shorter than normal. A shorter than normal spring is considered to be a weak spring. Weak springs can reduce engine performance at higher RPMs and can cause a valve to burn. Next measurement is for spring squareness. You're gonna place a spring next to a square. Rotate it until you find the largest gap at point A, which is about right here. The maximum allowable gap for this spring is 0.134 inches. I have the blades on this filler gauge totaling 0.134 inches. So these blades should not fit in this gap. And they do not fit. This spring is good. If the gap is too large, the spring is not square and can cause uneven wear on the valve seat, on the valve guide, and valve stem. Use a valve spring tester to measure the spring pressure. Spring pressure is measured at two lengths. Spring pressure is measured at two lengths. The first one is at the spring's installed height. This is when the valve is closed. AAC also calls this the seat pressure. With the valve closed, there is still some tension on the spring. The second measurement is at the spring's open height. This is when the valve is fully open during maximum camshaft lift. A general rule is that the spring pressure should be within 10% of the specification. Within 10% of the specification. If the spring is under specification, it is considered weak and needs to be replaced. Next up, valve measurements. The intake valve is usually larger than the exhaust valve. So they have separate specifications. The exhaust valve can have stem necking. Here we see an early form of it. Stem necking is caused by hot exhaust gases circling around the stem. Replace these. Clean the valve and measure its overall length. The specification for this intake valve is between 4.0548 and 4.0. 0.862 we are at specification you're going to measure the stem of the valve in three different spots using an outside micrometer three different spots the specification for this intake valve is between 0.2154 and 0.2159 inches here are our measurements a general rule is that tapers should not be more than one thousandth of an inch. At the valve head area, we have this vertical portion. This is the margin. This diagonal portion, about 45 degrees, is the face. So, proper valve to seat contact is in the middle of this face area. The steeper diagonal area above 
is the fillet. And this part of the valve is the head. We're going to measure it. The thickness specification for this intake valve is 1.32 inches. We are at 1.37. You're going to measure it in two spots for out of round. The margin has a minimum thickness specification. The valve margin, it can be difficult to measure. If the margin is below specifications, the valve will have poor heat dissipation, which can lead to cupping or a burned valve. Last up, the valve guide. Use a small bore gauge and a micrometer to measure the valve guide in three different spots. Three different spots. Worn valve guides can cause uneven wear of the valve seat. Uneven wear of the valve seat will cause poor sealing between the valve and the valve seat. This will allow combustion gases to leak out. And when combustion gases leak out, the valve can burn. One thing to know is that you must recondition the valve guide before any work is done to the valve seat. Guide first, then the seat. Last is calculating the valve stem to valve guide clearance. Valve stem to valve guide clearance. You're going to subtract the first measured valve guide inner diameter by the first measured valve stem diameter. In this example, we calculated a clearance of 18 ten thousandths of an inch. The specification here is between 0 0.0010 and 0 0.0027. So this first portion is within specifications. You will then calculate the other points and that's going to wrap it up for this video. Tune in to video number three. We'll talk about the cylinder head.